we soggy enough yet? Are we cold enough, warm enough, cold enough, warm enough? Are we getting these uh, climate extremes? Really only one political climate, it seems. And it's the one that's beating us down. And that's why we're crickets. We continue to allow these people that we uh, so-called put in, in leadership. Forgot they were supposed to be statesmen and things like that, but they walked us right into a, what the plan was. Again, anybody with a plan is probably going to win, especially if you don't even know there's a plan. Anybody in the game, anybody makes a game, we don't see it. That was up to us. And now the job seems so, so ex- uh, massive. You know, the, even all you know, the numbers went stoop, completely stupid. Uh, I, I don't even, really, I don't even get it. How we get all these things to go on, and it's like uh, it's almost like a test. Uh, you know, how much more are these people going to put up with and think it's actually real, or it's real enough? But I mean, actually, real. Thank you for tuning in today. I think this will be BTWRLM203. And last week I said 2002, telling you I'd be, if I got that number wrong, I'd probably be losing my mind. So maybe I'm already losing my mind. Uh, it was 203, BTWRLM203, for those on past cast or podcast. Trying to prod you into uh, action, prod you into doing something, anything to stop what you see. That's a wrong that needs to be made right. And there's all kinds of things that we can go after. But as I've, you know, year after year, I've been trying to look at other ways to conceive of this. And I guess there's a couple I could go. But it seems more prevalent that the war, we are in a war. We're in a war. We were told we were going to be in a war. We were exposed that, you know, you can have have a republic if you can keep it was a real main problem because you were gave something. And then we didn't keep it because we didn't really understand it. And uh, so now we hear today it's a democracy this and democracy that. And even this Trump, uh, Trump guy's uh, administration, his, his press, press secretary, secret airy, is coming out and tell you it's democracy. And, and, uh, and I, hear, I just hear crickets uh, for the most part. Or we, we hear it and we don't really bind, bound, bind ourselves into a, some commitment to start really working uh, against it. Uh, and even with, like with Twitter and things, we just mass amount of people just slamming these people on Twitter alone, all saying the very same thing on point, the facts that can be produced, cite, cite, cite the fact to somebody, and they start getting a flood of this kind of thing. Uh, pretty soon that they're not, they're either not going to look at their Twitter or where, or Facebook, whatever, the, wherever they are, uh, or or they're going to have to realize that the the tide is really turning and people aren't just fed up and not going to take it anymore. They're now taking action to stop it. And this again, over and over. Uh, I don't want to get, I don't like getting too much into any like religious talk, so to speak, but I had some people I talked to, some kids I talked to, and they started bringing up their religious beliefs and this and that in the Bible. And I'm, I'm okay with all that. I can talk through lots of it. I'm not that much anymore of a chapter and verse guy. And that was really kind of leaning on them a bit. But I said, listen, I'm just talking about principles here because a lot of people are they're put off by the uh, religious thing, but there's principles that we have to live by. And uh, I found out they were doing just the same thing that the lawyers do. They cut out one word that takes out the responsibility to have to do the right thing. And the right, the writer things, not just one, but things. It was interesting how we are um, completely conditioned and don't even realize it. It's a pervasive problem. And... Uh, you know, they tried to challenge me on certain things, and I would, would, since I don't do the chapter and verse too much, I come back with my answers. Well, it came to a point of, I made a statement um, in response to their position, and he came back to me with a, he walks in the room and talks about this status. He was all proud about being these multiple legal statuses, and I'm thinking, do you even know what you're talking about? And then he tied it up, commingled it with a religious belief, and I'm thinking, you don't even know what you're, you're really saying. And so I, over the conversation time, I tried to untangle that for them. They're really resistive, and I don't, you know, I don't need to push anything. I just want to give instruction and let them go check it out. And uh, so I made a comment. He goes, well, where that, where's that in the Bible? And I said, well, I'll have to get back to you because I don't know where the chapter and verse. He denied the existence. And so I went back, and I found it, and I turned it back. You know, I called him up and told him, here's, here's, you can research on this. 
Uh, and the whole point was is that even in the study material that he was using, his Bible, uh, he was misinterpreting uh, the points, the really important points that, that are the knowledge, the accurate knowledge you have to gain. The, then the everywhere I find it when I look very carefully, the command to do something with it and then the command to do the right thing is a universal truth in us dealing with ourselves. It's us also in the spiritual realm if we go there. That I see people locking themselves into the failure and excusing away the action part of what we're supposed to be doing. In fact, I only quoted one little spot just to let you know what it was. I said, it says right in the Bible, God's not a respecter of person. They want to know where that was. Happened to be in the same chapter that, that, that these kids were using as their authority to resist doing the right thing under the law. Uh, so God's not a respecter of persons. He walked in, gave me a bunch of legal statuses. He commingled with the religion. And I said, you know, you've got to cut that legal status off of you. You have to understand what it is. That this person thing, this personage thing is important to understand. This mask we go around and is either we wear or is put on us, whether we like it or not, or, or throw it off. Again, Guy Fox mask really comes prevalent here. You put on these characterizations everywhere or they're put on you. You know, you got to cut that loose from you and then keep going where you're going, but, but cut, those, cut the falsities uh, away from you. And then I looked a little farther in the Romans. It was a Romans 2.11. For those of you who want to go check, it's right at the end of 2.11. Uh, God's not a respecter of person. But you got to read again in context. you got to read the, read the whole paragraph, or maybe even before, however you want to do it, just to see this. Right after that was another impor very important uh, conversation in the fact of uh, what it stated, which was, you have to take action, lawful action. Now, I understand that may have Old Testament stuff and all that, but the point is it's a truth that runs, a principle that we have to live by. If we don't take lawful action, we're taking unlawful action. For all y'all that are, oh, we got, can't have laws and rulers. No, we have to rule thyself. We have government in ourselves. And everybody that throws this government thing off is throwing off the responsibility to be those things I've told you over and over in the past. I haven't gotten to this for a long time ago. We have every element in each one of us to constitute the parts and pieces of what a, a government is and needs to be. And it, it can be translated between this, these realms, between spirit and real. Mind, body, and spirit. You have the action of each one. That's another authority. You have it sitting contained in your body. That's your territory. The border skin is the territory that you call yourself as well as the substance in it. You are a nation unto yourself, and if you don't understand, if you don't believe in government, you can't ever, ever uh, support your own, your own system. Is why I'm not a, a believer that there uh, no government. In fact, I think I just saw something. I have to just shake my head. I don't even want to get involved in the argument that if you're a believer in government, you're a believer in slavery. That's not true. As I'm looking at it, those that believe that are looking at the at wrong as, as, as trespassers beating people down as government. And it wasn't ever in there. There's nothing in this situation that would allow that, except that there's no accountability to it. Uh, that is really what they're responding to. Uh, I, I've come, again, as my studies showed me, and I think they're very accurate studies. They've give, served me well, I believe. Uh, we are a, uh, literally a government unto ourselves. We have all, uh, our government, so-called, is the fractal of us, our internal authority over ourselves. Now, we can put a twist on the, not a twist, but a, we can make an acknowledgement that we ought to, our inner, our inner state should not interfere with other inner states or other states, which would be amongst ourselves, and we should live in peace, nations within peace. So, but we are going to have to have, a, we have to have the mind, the body, and spirit. It has to have the, the mind, you have to have the law, and you have to have the execution of law, and you have to make your own law, the principles that you live by. These are all what government does. It's supposed to do, and it's supposed to be neutral so that you make it through where you're doing it. So we, we, have these, we have these responsibilities already in us that are, I see, denied everywhere as people try to come to terms with the abuse that they're, that they're living, that we find ourselves in. That's really... Whether or not it was created that way, we should not be living it anyway. I don't need a law or a rule to say that I need to stand against some sort, some form evil, and that requires me to act again. Act, and I need to act correct. I need to find out what the correct action, whatever the source is. I need to find what that is that makes the response that in the world that I want to live in uh, pro more proper. 
and I only assume that we want to be peaceful. I, I, I guess we could all live, have great fun in, 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 a, in a war world, which where we are, we could agree to that and just have, think it's great fun to go just decimate everything and everyone. There is that reality could happen. I think we're living it, but I mean, it's, it's couched pretty well. But because we have this other thought that maybe we be best in peace and just get along in the world, you know, I tend to go that way. In, in any rate. So just thinking about these things that we, we co-mingle thoughts and we don't really separate how we never really settle down and figure out well, what's the what's the foundation of all this? Why the heck are we even here? What what are we up against? And, and I can only tell you it's a, it's an ongoing war. It, it's reflected even in this, if you will, the spiritual. There's a, a war going on. It's beyond us. It's way beyond us. But in a way we have to do our part to example what we uh, well example would be the best way the the peaceful way and do it peacefully doesn't mean that i don't agree with government i don't agree with government with the way it's out there i do believe that i have a, my own government that i'm going to establish and if i don't reflect that example correctly then i'm doing something wrong i got still some work to do on me and so in my wake, I would hope, is more peaceful action. It doesn't mean that as I'm traveling the narrow path, as we're told, and maintaining that path because there's going to be those that want to pull us off of us either to do harm or, or cause us to be do, the harm doer as well and make justify their harm like a gang. But we stick to our narrow principles and we can only do that in a certain, certain way. Uh, that's just the way we're made. Uh, and we, have the same, we use all the same functions that government does to deny a government uh, outwardly uh, amongst all of us would be kind of foolish, I think. And so until we get these kind of these um, uh, principles understood, these foundational understandings, we're going to be just flailing uh, around. And those that have the more organized thought, even if it is evil, compared to the way I would think, they're going to win. They're, they're not going to win necessarily against me, but I'll be in that battle against them. And then when I'm gone... There, whoever, whoever's remnant is still around wins. And when I'm gone, uh, there is no remnant. So they win. And so that's up to you. And if you have a remnant, uh, that'll be on them. When you are no longer there to witness the crime and arrest it or try to, uh, what you are trying to arrest as a crime will be on them. And they'll be totally useless to themselves. So the people, the young ones coming up. Oh, there's always going to be the remnant that don't like slavery. That's for sure. But that's not the internal one. And that's not what good government would do as I can see it. I think we, again, I say, uh, mining districts were governments. If that, if, if I, one thing I can say is how that worked out for us amongst ourselves, we certainly got an example of how, what good government was in a, in a mining district. It was probably the closest I can see. It was the people who had the property uh, who were doing the production for everybody else uh, were a, a class apart to pr be protected, and they'd, they, they bounded up together as a class uh, to protect themselves internally and externally. To, essentially, the mining law that miners made that Congress adapted was a law to create peace amongst the miners, in, in a in in a in a base foundational productive mode that can produce wealth, and people are greedy about that. People will want to steal that from you. They want to make you let you find the the, the hot pocket or do the work, and then beat you up on the way to the the store for your pouch of gold. This is what this is not a good. This is not good of, in people. These are opportunists. They end up being part of government. Why we have what we see as a cockristocracy, it's not government. It's psychopaths and sociopaths who have gotten up in a places of position, of decision, that rule your life, and we were, were required, and it's so dis, almost removed from us, that we were required to protect against that. That is the example and, uh, that we live today. So get, get into our, more, trying to get more into the tabs here. I get off again, start thinking about things, and uh, all of a sudden it just washes my mind with new information, even though I've set up a whole new discussion. It's just how it works, I guess, here. That this war uh, has got you, as I put the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars document at the bottom, a link at the bottom of every blogcaster page uh, for you to read. Or I did the, uh, I read parts of the things that were not pictures and or electronics decision, the discussion. Uh, I did, I've done the broadcasts on that, spent a lot of time on those. 
to read for you what, what they're saying in there, that there's this society that would be created uh, that would allow you to plug yourself in, and uh, where you plug yourself in would benefit that system uh, with a uh, an offer of a perceived benefit, which actually wouldn't be more than to uh, take more advantage of you. The opportunists actually rule this place. And we, we kind of let them there, and so that's on us. That I wanted, I keep wanting to point out this electronic technocratic connection and some of the vulnerabilities. So let's, I just want to do these quickly, uh, this one, and then move on. Uh, things that I've been talking about that keep coming around to remind us that there were true. The things I've pointed out are coming or here or happening and still happening. And so we want, uh, we just need to keep protect the, for the vulnerabilities. There's a big one apparently, and we all tend to use this. I think uh, RLM may actually have one uh, source of uh, uh, our archives are, are use the, use this service, so I can't I can't know. I think it might be SoundCloud, though. I don't know. It's Cloudflare. It's a it's an inter it, it's a content delivery network that you uh, are that hosts all these files, all these places we send you to go to listen to the broadcasts at RLM, uh, SoundCloud, TuneIn. Um, uh, what are they? All of them. I, 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 so many now. Heart, I heart. All, all, anyway, there's I don't. Uh, they they use different services for content delivery and local content delivery to you nationally, uh, but these uh, these these electronic uh, connection points uh, are set up and exploitable. As I've been talking over and over, and I'm not no I'm no longer any mind about it. I don't do the electronics much anymore, and I don't do any of the programming at all in uh, that way, and uh, so we are just kind of vulnerable to the thing. Just as just as the secret silent weapons of quiet wars was talking, serious bug exposes sensitive data for millions, millions of sites sitting behind uh, Cloudflare. Well, I don't know if that's behind, but using the service of Cloudflare, uh, Flare, which is a content delivery network and a web security provider that helps optimize safety and performance for 5.5 million websites on the internet is a warning its customers or its critical bug that has been exposed. Uh, to range uh, uh, in a range of sensitive information, including passwords and cookies and tokens used to authenticate authenticate users. It's given a name called Cloud Bleed. It's similar to what was called Heart Bleed from 2014. Uh, really don't want to get too technical to roll your eyes around, but you, you're like, I'll have a link. You can find it on the internet as well. Uh, but the point was is that it, these things start to collect up. Uh, information from you. It was caused by a buffer overflow, and anything uh, that was not uh, re that overflowed the buffer that was in, co in that was contained. Uh, now this, again, this is a security website, but it was con supposed to be contained. When it overflowed that buffer and went out into the into the circuitry, it got picked up as cacheable information. So any information that flooded into Cloudflare and their servers and blew this buffer, uh, made a buffer overload. All that data that got pushed over the edge, um, like the Oroville Dam spill, uh, went down into the internet and, uh, and people like uh, people, yeah, people, corporations are people too. Uh, things like people like Google and Bing and, and Yahoo, they were able to pick all this information up as unencrypted uh, available information and leave it out for people to find. And it includes uh, the all kinds. A quote from this is, I'm finding private messages from major dating sites, full messages from a well-known chat service, online pa password manager data, frames from adult video sites, hotel bookings. He says, we're talking, we're talking full HTTPS requests. That's what's supposed to be the encrypted stuff, folks. They're, they're not supposed to be available. Uh, client IP addresses, full responses, cookies, passwords, keys, data, everything. Uh, this is not a small vulnerability. Won't go on more just to tell you uh, we always, this digital world is, is exploitable. There's opportunists. Uh, the caucusocracy is us, folks. Don't, uh, we are those uh, invaders. Uh, no matter, there might be some of us that, that want to keep our business to ourselves and also don't, have a, don't want to get in anybody else's business. There's a lot of people uh, that don't, don't think that. 
And so everything we, we, it's like now we're getting into this mentality. Almost every part of our life is a vulnerability. It's a security vulnerability. Uh, you, you don't get that in a peaceful world, folks. You, 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 ha- you get that when you're in a world at war. And that's us. These uh, illegal entities aren't doing this. Um, the, it's just us allowing this nonsense. And at some point, uh, you know, we do that. Be- we have our reasons. We put our excuses uh, but there's a sense of uh, disrespect, and I guess that's what s- kind of rem- uh, uh, moves for me, uh, the disrespect. Then there's companies that will exploit this. It makes it available just because the nature of the beast of the w- interwebs, and, and, and we uh, can be made vulnerable even though we don't know. I don't know the extent of this. It's supposed to be an, inter, an, inter- an interweb uh, type of connection uh, exploit, but... When you have these kinds of exploits, as we've been hearing, again, as I keep saying and I keep finding, rooting uh, an Android phone or rooting an, uh, an iPhone means that there are known exploits in your own systems. Uh, you are going to have to understand that, that as we're walking into this near future, if we're not already here, remember, your whole life will be in your phone. In the future, that phone will be a little bitty chip stuck in your head somewhere. They're working on it now. Elon Musk is already talking about this. Or wherever they, wherever they implant it, it's going to be there. This is the start of it. All this information is available. All this information that is your life, it'll end up being your life. When they go to blockchain, cashless society, your bank accounts, what you pay, where you pay, what you buy, how you buy, will be available here. It's already available in these services. And this isn't even in the exploitable stuff in your phone and your computers. This is the stuff in cloud, so-called cloud. This is a, a funny, interesting name. They said this is a cloud computing. Folks, it's just a bunch of computers. There's no cloud. And there's no man in that cloud. Okay? There's, it's, it's computers. It's simply machines. It's like the one you use to listen to me. And we make this big old euphemism. It's a cloud. No, these are computers that are exploitable on a number of fronts, and your life is in there. Maybe not so much for some of us today. It's coming very soon, though. They're making it very difficult. You heard me talk last week. You're not going to walk into a store at some point without having to give your face. It's tied into some uh, uh, probably military situation. It's a police or the military, in my mind. Uh, it goes with national, national ID. You heard all the last week's discussion on that. You're not going to be able to go anywhere without an electronic tag somehow that that file, that information is exploitable. You, you, we're really going to have to take ownership of this problem somehow. I, I just want to call your attention to it. Those that may be affected by it um, can research deeper. Uh, also something I told you to be careful of, uh, and for all the 420 crowd, the mar- uh, cannabis people, marijuana, uh, even the distinction, and I, I hope, you know, I haven't gotten any emails. I'm really, I'm actually kind of disappointed at this one. I was hoping that someone would step up and say, okay, I got, I'll, I'll shut you up. Here's my letter. I'm going to send, or this is the letter I did send or whatever. And I'm engaging the DEA. I'm engaging the government. I'm engaging this stuff for the, for the uh, marijuana. And uh, thank you very much. Or go to Hades about your information. I did it my way. I didn't hear anything. Uh, I think this is so important. And, he, and I told you, be very careful as the states were bringing along their marijuana, their legalization. I said, you've got to decriminalize it. Then Israel came and says, we're going to use the real word what decriminalize is, which means criminalize it a little bit. And I said, okay, we have to jump into non-criminalization. You're going to have to make it so it's not a crime. Uh, because, I said also, you're, be careful, you folks, in, uh, in states that have legalized it uh, and legalized recreational particular. You want to err on the side of the medical. Here's, the, here's what's coming with the new regime. Uh, Spicer, this is the, um, the Trump's um, press secretary, I think. Uh, hints, hints, hints. Well, they're giving you notice. Here it comes. Be careful. Hints at tighter pot enforcement. Quote, I do believe you will see greater enforcement of federal laws that make mar- recreational use of marijuana illegal. Was exactly what I told you before. Those of you that are doing this, err on the side. Go to the medi- medical side because they, we already have that, that the feds can't touch that part. Um, they actually make recognition of that in this article. Uh, I am suggesting to you strongly, err to the side of the medical. 
And so they're giving you the notice that they are not, they do not view uh, recreational uh, as, as legal. And there's reasons for that. I told you this is why I'm concerned. That means if you're growing in your house in a legalized state, legalized state they will come and take your property uh, if you only speak to recreational use, is what I'm, I guess I'm getting at. All, that, all this stuff to tell you, I, I don't know, it's a big old list. But, um, uh, so, again, this is the notice. The new regime is telling you they're, coming, they're probably coming after recreational. There's no support right now for it. There's no federal support. Uh, the states just did it. You're going to see, because they turned this not into a, a land use, as I've been trying to tell you to argue, or not argue, but set up the record for, they're going to de deal with this as a commerce side thing, and recreational is not covered in the law to protect you. Uh, this is no different in a way. And this is always interesting what I find, and maybe why I keyed in on it, uh, under mining law, and this is where the miners are, are really, they get it wrong. Uh, in fact, I'm having, um, I'm, 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 I'm seeing it again. People just don't settle down and read what they need to read to understand. Um, the miners who are getting beat down everywhere and what the state laws against miners are to prohibit an activity uh, have been focused on recreational mining, which is an oxymoron. Uh, mining is a livelihood. Recreational, you don't do it that way. A livelihood means it's for real. You're doing it for a living. Uh, recreational is it's a hobby. There's a lot of miners that said recreational uh, mining, so-called, is is protected underneath the, the grant. And it's not, folks. Uh, we got that on the Jefferson Mining District website. There's a document that we talked to a judge that made that uh, recollection, and we, uh, we, we accept that. We, in fact, we provided behind the scenes, we provided a, a letter to advance that to him and the law, where the law, where the law did support and where the law didn't. And he apparently re- uh, re-agreed and said, yeah, recreational is not covered by the law. We agree with that. Recreational things are not covered in law. That's not what the, what the government's about. And so they'll use that. You, you kind of, they get you using the recreational stuff, and now you're not covered and didn't know it. But they're coming to tell you. And uh, let, me, uh, let me offer now, what do I do behind the woodshed? Not to tell you the news. Not to, give, be, the, not to be the prairie dog just to, to say, hey, Hey, Julie, you're going to get taken up by the eagle. Here it comes. No, it's to start looking. How do we inter interfere with this? For those of you uh, that um, are interested, even though I have no, no belief that any of you listening to me are interested in, in, in this marijuana issue, uh, that I'm going to offer a, a, an insight uh, that I think would be a, a think to th at least think about, where the federal government now has conceded medical, where the states have now decriminalized uh, that medical uh, and allowed you to grow underneath uh, rules, uh, but it's still protected from the federal imposition. And this means that if you're growing and, and the Fed comes in and says it's recreational, then you will have your place taken as a, as a uh, commerce uh, benefit to you that wasn't supposed to be had. It's, a, it's contraband. Uh, your, all your, your cards, everything, your bank accounts, everything will be claimed up underneath this. Maybe we should start looking, now that they've conceded medical is fine, and we come up with a logic, and we come up with our, you, ourselves together, uh, like I have worked with a few people trying to come up with, well, what, how would we resolve this thing? How do we resolve this problem uh, to help people of an invasion that's not covered right now? Uh, how do we stop the, the imposition of government and corporations taking advantage? And I've said, well, just empower. Don't make a law make, prohibiting it, because you may not be able to do that either. But why don't you make a, a, a law, uh, uh, even locally, that empowers the, uh, someone for harm? When they get harmed and can prove it, like anybody, they go to court, but you, you, you make a statement of harm or you make a statement of uh, status of a condition that makes, uh, makes it available to remedy uh, that may not be existing today. So that's really more of what I'd be looking at here. What Now that the federal government has committed through this statement of, to medical and being that marijuana is only a plant and, and that's where I came in was that the medical use of, of an herb and like any other herb of the field to help us uh, help people when that finally came to my psyche that it actually did help and I wasn't into any of that before to know so this was new information and it made sense to me anyway that mother nature provides all kinds of plants for our to help us 
that that natural plant in its in its the state in which we would use it uh, is medicinal in its natural state that the thought occurred to me in encountering this attack uh, uh, against you all uh, notwithstanding no one seems to be that interested I'll offer something else we'll, let us maybe make a, a, a suggestion either make initiative Make a referendum. Well, you can't do a referendum until it goes through the legislature. Make the uh, ask the uh, a conducive legislature if you can't uh, legislator if you can't do it yourself in the states that you can't do it, uh, that you can't move an agenda forward uh, uh, that would state that the use of marijuana is at, at least prima facie medicinal. And really, I think that may be all you have to say, that the use of of cannabis in whatever forms are derived from the plant are medical. And you would list list all the medical uses as a state law. Uh, This would be a state provision, a recognition uh, of all the things in law that they already know now that it does. And and this would then, my my thought is, to this limit, uh, you make the list of things that, that it that it does now that we know, uh, you might even uh, make a finding of the legislature by producing the proof of how this is that way, how this is really a medic medicinal use, and we can then find as a state that it the use alone is completely medicinal. In other words, you're out you're saying that when you use it, it, it is prima facie medicinal. In other words, the burden's now on the oh, the one coming in, which would be the federal government, to show that you are using it otherwise. So you you'd be you should be smart enough to say, oh, I was doing it to calm my nerves. I was doing this for pain help. I was I had a migraine. I was I was uh, I wanted just to uh, mellow out because I was getting too uh, high strung. Uh, I have carbuncles that I need to fix. Something more than oh no, I'm just here being you know smoking recreationally. The state finds by fact that it's medicinal, makes a law that says it's prima facie, the use of marijuana in whatever form it is for, is prima facie medical, is what came to me to offer you all that might inter- be interested to start to work on in order to admit, admit into, a cor- into a state to make law. And what that would do would put the burden on the federal government to show it wasn't for ben- medicinal, uh, medicinal uses, and they then cannot attack anybody. Now, I'm not looking at all the ins and outs of a sneaky lawyer. I'm looking at just usually just the surface of this. That we have in our power in the states the power to make law. And I've been saying dismayed that we don't do that. And we don't do what we need. You see, that, you see it happening all the time, but you don't think you're powerful enough to do that. And so my thought was, where we have a, uh, the enemy has committed, and the enemy in my mind is anybody who doesn't want to look at the rationale here and would lie on the record in an agency would be the federal government, the DEA, which I would hope some of you have already answered and, and engaging those guys to show them that, or this, the women there, to show them that. And even the new guy Sessions who says that uh, the marijuana use is for dumb people or stupid people or whatever, um, but whatever he calls them, bad people, it doesn't matter. Uh, you would address that, but you address it locally and you put this use into a rec- a fe- uh, the enemy's recognized exclusion on a statewide level, I think would be a, a better approach. And then what have you done there? If you've been following what I've been saying on how to deal with this and how to think ahead, how to work uh, the strategies and tactics, once it's prima facie medical by its reasons found by the legislator that would, legislature that we can see, it, it then makes a prima facie medical use. It also removes any legalization. As long as you know it's for medicinal purposes and always know to say that, this would non-criminalize it, wouldn't it? We'd be able to get to where we want to do and protect ourselves, at least on the surface, and some, better, some, some of you better than me to have more time to research this, to find the loop, the problem with my logic here, we will need to do that. And if it's there, I'd like to know. But on the surface, this would non-criminalize the use by ordering, making a definition in the state that all use, all use is prima facie medical. 
and I've repeated myself a few times, I want to make sure that you understand uh, what I'm saying to get you to think about it. I'm talking actually a lot slower than I was thinking about here. Don't be so helpless. Even if I, I'm a little bit wrong, fix it. But find out how to, how to make it right. I only think about some of these things. They're not part of my, my scheme of things, so I don't really think too deeply, but I think fairly quickly and principally about some of this. That I think that I'd be uh, food for thought at least, and maybe more, a lot more. That we are being driven like beasts of burden that the, the government produces, uh, that has created us uh, to be for it. And we will not even bellow out our displeasure. And, and yet we have to do even more. That I, I guess I'm sticking on this a little bit. I, I think this is so critical for us, maybe more than the subject matter, that, w that I explain a bit, at least I sense, uh, I feel I need to explain a bit, that we have an option. We don't have to stand by while this happens to us or our neighbors. And I, I see this in any capacity of, dis of potential destruction where you have a centralized power and we're allowing that centralized power to be the centralized power under its excuses to harm us is, again, the, that accessory of the crime against us that we, we have to stop. So I, I said, I, I've said, be careful, folks. Don't, don't get into the, be careful of the recreational side of this. And sure enough, that's right where the line gets drawn by the federal government uh, whatever their reasons are or non-reasons, and don't ever forget the war on drugs is behind this, so you have to answer to that. Go look at the purpose for the war on drugs, defeat that in the state legislation on on the, actually call it out for a fraud, where this has now been found, uh, these things and uses have been found, that because of its, uh, its uh, comprehensive use, uh, uh, and, and don't forget to throw in the industrial side, not only does the cannabis have a medicinal, but we have a, a hemp, uh, and, the oil, and then the oil is a medicinal, as well as an industrial fiber of production, the creation of actual wealth in the nation. The state can actually make a very powerful position that would, that would non-criminalize it by, by defining it as a prima facie medicine. The other thing would be to show that it was a fiber, right? It's not illegal. So say that, too. Well, you might as well make this an encompassing place. It doesn't need to be that long, though. That I, I, this is an example for me to tell you, we aren't helpless. We just aren't engaging ourselves. And how much, how peaceful is that, really? It just takes you your time to focus on it. Probably a lot of other things you would be doing to waste time. You could actually be working, even if you took you working with other people. So there, there's a suggestion. I'm not just here to read the news. I'm telling you, it's notice of things that we need to be doing and notice of the things and opportunities we might have in, in a caucusocracy. It's still there for us. They didn't take out the rudiments of the good part of government. They actually left it there. It's there and they can't touch it. And that should be kind of a little bit of an, uh, of a, of an enticement, inducement to start using, us, utilizing it. In one, in one regard... What can it harm you? Another thing that's been relied upon that I guess is a couple of things that came in the, in, the, in the notice to us, the news, it's in the notice, is a reliance on uh, certain things we think are so that aren't, again, uh, with respect to uh, guns. Uh, So-called the Second Amendment, impervious, unimpairable, uninfringible right, completely now under the gun, Unmarked assault rifle sales land CNC mill gunsmith in prison. This is a story of someone who was a machinist who lent his, uh, his uh, access to his shop out, who took what they call blanks for a lower, which is an automatic, it's the thing that's regulated by the federal government, uh, and I don't see the truth of some of this in the story about it being the firearm. I don't see that. But they've got a little problems here and there. I think that the, D, that the uh, BTAF may have overextended itself in how it approaches this, or the DOJ uh, in its, in its process, persecution here. But there was uh, some machinist who would take these blanks to make the lowers, and he had a little idea, it was out of Sacramento, that if he had you come in, he would set the parts up in his mill, 
And I don't know why it takes a mill. I understood it was only a dang drill press. Why you couldn't just stand there and do your own, I don't know. But he would have a, 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 a machine, uh, the CNC machine. It's a computer-controlled uh, programmer, program machine. Uh, he'd have you push the button, and that would suffice that you made your own lower, which is what they claim the law requires, uh, that, uh, that you make your own lower from the blank and, and that someone else can't make it. Now, I found a little bit of problem with my, rem with my memory about how this is supposed to actually work. But the point is here, those of you that are out there that try to make, get around the, the law um, that you think you're getting around it, uh, when a government focuses on you, you're probably not going to be able to be right, but you're going to be more vulnerable. And this is like the same thing about the medical versus the recreational marijuana. This is, uh, this guy got taken down because the government was able to show that that uh, didn't, uh, what he was having, just you pushing the button wasn't enough. So I don't want to get too deep in this. Just be forewarned, those of you that do this. Uh, start understanding that, again, we can make uh, we can make the que the rhetorical question: Is this what living in freedom is like? That uh, we just asking the questions not a, asking the question of the obvious is not enough anymore. And so we're going to have to we're going to have to come to terms with that. Uh, now I'm not going to no, nothing more. Those of you that do this. Uh, this blank manufacturer or have someone just come and push a button. You need to find out about this. Anybody you know that might be doing it, let them know. They may or may not have heard. They probably have heard, but you're going to have to, uh, you're gonna have to uh, come to terms with that, that little problem. They really don't want people to be doing guns. Well, what's the point? Now, let's get to the point. Second Amendment was, it was one of the ways, one of the ways, the, and for the purpose of what? Not, not going and shooting deer, and no, not not self-defense in the private capacity, although that's there as a, that is the foundational purpose. Uh, but it was really to, as a, as a, as a one measure against a government that gone wild. And so wouldn't we see the government actually, or governments, actually wanting to defeat this? It shouldn't even have been a question. And yet it is. So they come after this weaponry thing. And then we get now, we've been all been uh, thinking everything's coming off, uh, everything's going fine. And I don't know where the, the, uh, the gun groups are, except for I think the um, NRA is, is a, it's a, like an environmental group against uh, land use, uh, excuse me, um, resource, uh, natural resource or watershed management. Uh, NRA is kind of like that. They're, they're, a, they're, the, they're a gang green of, uh, of gun, uh, gun rights uh, that the way the, the state's uh, authorities are, the Supreme Court made a decision that said that the states can determine, because the Second Amendment only applies, uh, applies to the federal government, the states would be right to make decisions about gun rights. Because the power springs from the people, or the Tenth Amendment, or Eleventh Amendment. Well, what they conveniently forgot right there where they would apply it anywhere else when they want to take control at the federal level is that the 14th amendment pretty well subverted all that and notwithstanding that and here's how a slow encroachment happens and i don't know the politics of the region so if some of you that know this and say oh yeah don't you know that uh, no i don't know about that i just know that when you're not paying attention this is where the uh, politics leads us by the nose and whomever it is will use their party power to destroy us. It's government. It's those in power. Uh, Maryland's military weapons ban upheld by a federal court of appeals. Putting you on notice. Maryland's military weapons ban upheld by the federal court of appeals. That title all by itself is oxymoronic in my mind. It's an oxymoron. If the Second Amendment, or no, not if, given the Second Amendment was to abolish, that one of the tools to abolish government gone wild, necessarily the weapons may be military, wouldn't they? My question why we don't have rocket launchers and tanks when the Second Amendment right to stop the government gone wild sits there for us. Why someone in some far off land who doesn't have a constitutional right to bear arms has rocket launchers and anti-aircraft guns on the back of Toyotas and other, other tech tech devices and then tanks and 
grads and all this other stuff. Why they would have all that and we in America that's supposed to have this to protect ourselves against our own government can't is something that I just don't understand. I look around myself and I'm saying, where are all you people? That when Maryland estate comes up and says that they, what you have is a military weapon that we can ban it, completely violating the purpose of the Second Amendment. And a, second, a federal court of appeals says that's okay. You have got to understand the federal military consequence against you and that they are defeating your capacities. No, it doesn't matter that I've said you better not use that right now because they've got that figured out. Lincoln told us how that wasn't going to work for us. The point is, is that they're stealing it from us right in front of our face. I guess I'm more interested in the process by which that happens and that here's one more notice that you're crickets. You're crickets. They're getting away with it. Don't ever forget the Bar Association has made these laws. The Bar Association then interprets these laws and they're fulfilling the agenda that, uh, that's, that's shown to you as a, as a monolith over at the UN with the pistol with a, bar- a knot tied in the barrel. Now, where am I getting? Is that my opinion, conspiracy theory? Folks, you know me better than that. Now, for those of you that have been with me for a while, where, do, where have I talked about where, why that isn't a conspiracy theory? Remember when I read out to you the House a resolution of the Bar Association itself? And a Bar Association is an NGO. You don't get that title unless you're certified by the, by the UN to, do, to be such. You're just not a nonprofit. You actually have a higher status. That their House resolution bills sit from way back, decades back, say that, agree that they will follow and promote sustainable development. In other words, they're following and promoting the United Nations uh, directives. That's just a small pinhole of this whole thing. That come back to today and it's happening. They're going to get it, folks. They're just going to do all this. And in the future, well, I don't, I'm not going to be here, so it doesn't, doesn't matter, I guess. I mean, maybe, I, well, I can't say I'm not going to be here. Who knows? Lots of theories. But the point is, I may, have, I may not have any physical ability to do much about what I might be able to be still in awareness of. And uh, that's your little ones, folks. That's your future. It's our future right now. It's happening. What we thought couldn't happen to the cashless society the ban of guns they're doing it a holy they're coming right through the the whole people which is not you it's the it's the legislators and they're stealing away all you thought was uh, there and they're not getting a fight one and i don't mean fight they're not getting resistance at all and i as i say in the more proper way so i'm i'm uh, a lot disappointed but i don't know what else to do i i do what i can do and you hear me talk here every week about uh, things about that now so Moving on to other dangerous things, and what I consider to be, you know, part of that fake news or take, you know, don't let a catastrophe get away that you can't exploit against people. Uh, but for me, it was more evidence again of of the repeating, recurring, recurring uh, fear porn that everyone wants to buy into. A story came through another more dangerous thing than I think even guns might be. And it's probably because of of the government itself cr- getting its uh, act together and making all this a long while back. From Russia with love is the question. And what they're talking about is the dangerous radioactive particles have been detected across Europe and no one knows where they came from. So right off the bat, Putin did it. You know, Putin did it. And, uh, you know, I got to wonder about that all, as well. Uh, but the dangerous radioactive particles... And no one knows where they came from. So right in this discussion, the only reason why I'm putting this out, no, the cancer-causing chemicals and all these other things. Scientists baffled after detecting cancer-causing chemical. Well, that's a chemical, right? That's not a particle. And so we have a bunch of information that's coming around. And they say that's produ- this chemical is produced during nuclear de- disasters or atomic bomb blasts. Traces of iodine-131. Now, I'm going to get your mind on over to Fukushima. Fukuzilla. Traces of iodine-131 were found in Norway, Finland, Poland, Czech Republic, Germany, France, Spain in January, but the public were not immediately alerted. You think if they let it take any time extra that it gets harder and harder to find the source, folks? You think you think this is what I'm... We're now pointing back to what I told you would happen in Fukuzilla attacking the United States, all those cartoons they gave you, how fast it 
Look, Godzilla attacked the United States, yet the EPA stopped monitoring. And I told you why. I told you why it was. What, what did I say? I said, because if you started to put together all these monitor agents with the sources, you'll find out it's not coming and can't come from Fukuzilla. Same thing here. What, what I was interested to see, and uh, this was the first story that came out about it that I, I got a hold of, that there may, again, is a d fear porn, is radiation porn, is that they, um, they then blame Russia, they blame Russia's nuclear submarines, they blamed all of Russia. When I, I haven't looked at the, completely looked at their, their weather patterns, like I did in 2011 for uh, Fukuzilla, uh, the weather patterns at the time couldn't do it. You notice all the weather we've been having, it's been coming off the Atlantic and blowing, just blowing those people away in Europe. That was coming from the Atlantic. So I don't know how they're talking about coming from, uh, from Russia. And yet they claim that they think that Putin did it. Now, another story came up, which I thought was pretty fascinating, and a thank you to Hans in the Garlem chat last night. just found this. It's all the same story, but different title. Mysterious Radioactive Cloud. The Plume. Remember, folks, how they do this? This has been a weeks and weeks and weeks ago now. Maybe even a month. Mysterious Radioactive Cloud moves towards UK as a plane which tackled Chernobyl, called into you find the source. It's a United States plane, of course. And you understand how fat, how they've been blown away over there. The, the multiple, over this time, multiple nasty storms have hit that place. Didn't come from Russia. And yet this plane's going to go out and try to track down the uh, Iodine-131. What I found that was interesting in this story, uh, more of that they talk on and on and on and about it, Chernobyl now. They reference Fukuzilla, Fukushima. They talk about how this is all going to be tied. They talk about Soviet Ukraine in 1986. They keep pointing this out. They keep bringing out all the Europe's involved. But then they talk about this thing I didn't really understand before. Uh, one more source. Remember, they don't know where it's coming from. This is the experts. Experts say. They say they don't know where this is coming from. Weeks and weeks and weeks have been going by. Supposedly in a cloud that I guess can, can counter ty typhoon level winds. I mean, they were talking like over 100, 100 miles an hour. Not, not kilometers an hour. There was maybe miles an hour. That have hit and battered Britain and, and, the, and the Europe for, for we months. I'm all winter now. A and then they, they, they say they don't know where it's coming from. They're going to go send this plane out to find it. And one more source popped up that I would, hadn't thought about. But there's also a source that they know of that, that wasn't what I told you was in the United States and about Fukuzilla. The natural sources, which what uh, uh, Jones, uh, Alex Jones' crew found on the coast with that university, it was radio, radium and uh, thorium right out of the rock. Uh, but it was also hospitals. It was universities. I can tell you there's military testing people that are everywhere you don't know about. They're up in Northwest, there's Hanford. Uh, uh, there's the bomb sites. There's uh, other, other uh, devices and things, that, uh, facilities that put off radioactive gases. And then they bring up one more. There's uh, apparently sources in Europe that create iodine. And the byproduct of iodine is this... this this isotope, this iodine-131. And so there's lots of local sources, and yet they want, they do the fear porn about your destruction regarding, Fukuz you know, again, opening the mental wound, the psychic wound of Fukuzilla and Chernobyl and all, all these things. Remember, Chernobyl was just sealed off with a very massive and solid structure. So, again, it's kind of like, the facts just can't even reach this out that I'm again going to point this out. We are susceptible uh, to even in dismissal. See, this is our problem. My problem with we may know this, but we dismiss it and we move on. We can't dismiss it even if we know it's a fake. This is all fake news. It's a setup. They're setting up for other things. We probably know it's because they want to blame Putin again because he's now the, the concentrated evil of the globe. Don't look at what you and I do as far as our nations. Don't look at, or the nations that we're in, not our nations anymore, but the nations that we're in. Don't look at any cause and effect like that. Uh, no, focus on this guy because you got another agenda. Now we're going to throw this on you. And uh, my problem is, as I keep hearing over and over, 
And I wonder why I get, I get on this at all, because I keep hearing people talk about Fukuzilla like it's really going on. They did it here just last month again. It's over. I told you this was going to go on forever. And they're going on forever. Why? Because no one steps up and actually shuts it down. They, these people, they, uh, the, are the source of all information. And nobody shuts it down. And it allows this uh, emanating wave to go out and stay resonating in the atmosphere. And I guess that's the part that bothers me, as they're uh, feeding us information also that our environment is becoming more and more uh, deadly. And my problem with that is we've been, we've been given notice, whether or not I can prove it's all actually going to be happening or not, or just somebody's fairy tale, that they're, they're always talking about we're in an overpopulated state of the world. And they need to do some population control. And so they then get into the idea that there has to be some controls. And then they complain and cry about all these things in the atmosphere that government allows. Government caused nuclear things uh, that all of a sudden now they're all complaining that, uh, you know, you might be in trouble. Uh, continu uh, uh, continuing oxymoron that we never going to get to, get to, uh, get to, to, ta to take the task, come to terms with and take the task. And within the so all this week, there's this, you know, doom, doomageddon again coming, coming on, uh, that we're physically able, we're physically at risk. We're, we're not di just digitally ri at risk. We're physically at risk, vulnerable, to all these things. That there's the uh, champions of of the champions of of control of fixing uh, the the things that we need to to have done. Up pops again Bill Gates referencing nuclear war again as this dot to dot psychic attack happens to connect you from one place to the next it doesn't take you even watching the news all it takes is you watching and seeing someone who references something like this or just a little glance your mind will pick all this stuff up it's kind of like sub you do your own subliminal uh, programming this way this is what twitter does this is what uh, the, the a lot of the news things do I find myself uh, exactly, actually, I'll, I'll read something and, and not really put information on but I find myself thinking about that little glimpse. I say, wait a minute, that was important. I need to go back and find that. It wasn't important for what I was being programmed, where they tried to program me, is I'm trying to put my dots together, and that just fit another spot in the jigsaw puzzle of, of, of psychic control. Uh, Bill Gates pops up and says, bioterrorism could kill more than nuclear war. But no one is ready to deal with it, was his claim. And to me, that was notice to you of what's on the agenda. Because they referenced that he was saying this at that Munich security conference that we briefly talked about last week. This is another one of like the Bilderbergs, like the, uh, what are the CFR people, all, all these types of things. All these groups of private people getting together to talk with people in the seats of decision to actually have things come out the actual underpinnings of what happens and the advisors that tell the other people that are in seats of decision what decisions to make. This guy is a big player, although he's been found out to have all the conflicts of interest. Right now it's coming out. Now, this guy comes on the news scene and says that not even nuclear radiation here is worse than the bioterrorism that we're not ready to deal with. Stated in another statement, Bill Gates warns that a devastating pandemic is right around the corner, was the ominous notice. First of all, he used the made-up word pandemic. He, made up the, he used the word that was made up by the WHO, not the OWL, not the ROCK group, but the WHO, the World Health Organization. He, made a, he used the made-up word. This is going to be a fabricated devastation, folks. This guy's in on it. This is the notice. A pandemic is, is one of the world's three top threats, and it, if not prepared for, could wipe out 30 million people in less than a year, philanthropist Bill Gates says. Now, this is a war criminal, to my mind. This is a plan. Whether they execute this or are able to, I don't know. This is what's coming in the future. I want to read it again. He addressed this. Uh, you can get the story on the blogcaster. Uh, to me, this is a big uh, header. Why would he be talking like that? Why would I think? Why would I think that way? Remember, 
He, uh, we saw it on the video. I think it was the TED conference. You'll have a little link to the picture. It's a formula for CO2. He's one of these, uh, C he's one of these climate change adherents saying that man causes all this trouble. Well, the man, governments are causing, the people in government are causing the problems that we're dealing with in bioterrorism and uh, nuclear things, aren't we? And he's on the leading edge of all that through vaccines, and we're finding all the problems that are coming out. And he was the one that, uh, that broached, at least to my first sight, a, a formula that said CO2 equals uh, P equals S, P times S times E times C. Well, if you know a multiplication factor, uh, to reduce any of that, you just have to reduce the one, and it reduces the whole, the whole product of CO2. They think that people are the cause. One of the, the P that this stood for was people. Bill Gates already has a formula that says, and he said that in the TED conference, that if you reduce the people in this equation, we will directly reduce CO2. So this guy's on the leading edge of the very plan that he sees in the future could happen to get rid of 30 million of y'all. Back looking at 2010, he said so, Bill Gates, population reduction and zero CO2 is the same thing. Now just tight, top, putting dots together here, folks. They're moving us into the idea that, uh, well, the knowledge that actually that they're going to use what he's calling a bioterrorism is the government. Remember, is, is, is a, a fabrication, a tool uh, to do whatever it's set up to do in the Middle East, now throughout the world, to keep the war of terror going that is the government's tool against you all and why we live in battlefield America. Why you don't, at least, at least by the right of the powers that be uh, that will enforce power upon you at the point of a gun uh, or a gang, uh, don't, don't believe and they'll follow this thing, these characters written on a paper somewhere with someone's chicken scratch that you don't have any rights, you are, can be treated extrajudicially and you can be uh, definitely tamed without judicial uh, review or any rem remedy. This is right here in America, for those of you that uh, just woke up this morning. I don't mean wake up, I mean wake up. See, waking up is kind of an interesting thing. Everyone thinks they're woke up because they know some of this, this, this garbage, and I, can, I look around and say they don't know nothing. There's nothing that anybody actually knows. It, 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 what I see coming out of people uh, that they think they know, but it's not really, that's the surface part of it. And that, that we'll never get down to the action part. No different than I was talking to those kids, and they were talking, taking out, taking out a very important word or, or uh, a statement uh, so that they wouldn't have to learn to discern that that required them to take the lawful action, the right action. I see lots and lots of most everybody uh, doing this to themselves. And I, I haven't quite decided whether that's on, uh, impliedly on purpose. I mean, anyway, we all know what's right. So we do, we take out that thing that might put the, put the, put the responsibility on us, give us plausible deniability. But these people are out here to tell us what's going to happen and what's going on. They're talking now bioterrorism. I mean, there's so much I could... I, I look back through my, the broadcast sometimes when I'm posting and the broadcast. I mean, I could have talked about that. There's that to talk about. There's all these things that are going on. Not as the news, at the underlying principles that what we can look out for that I'm going to encourage you again. You really need to go through some of these links if you're interested in understanding what is being referred to and why this thing is the way it is and those things will give you at least an understanding and I think for myself it gave me oh, okay that's what they're doing and now I've got to come to terms with that in order to counter it. In this one 2010 article they actually come up with the uh, first global revolution and the club of Rome and another thing I notice if I don't know if I'm going to get to it because I don't remember where it was uh, the, the Gates will talk about global health. The, the WHO will talk about global health. They're not talking about your health, folks. They're talking about Gaia. They probably never heard Carlin say that uh, Mother N Nature invented uh, us, if we want to go that way, in order to go exploit petroleum in order to make plastic. Mother Nature couldn't make plastic and so the Mother Nature needed to invent us in order to make plastic, because Mother Nature wants plastic. Something we're finding out, even though it does it to our, uh, you know, we shouldn't be doing this and making the mass, but Mother Nature seems to take care of it. When all that plastic then gets in the ocean, Mother Nature cleans it up for herself over some time. 
And I'm not saying I like it. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm saying that we may have all this whole thing all messed up and maybe Carlin was a little bit more right. In other words, we may have completely wrong impressions on all, all these things. And then these things and that aren't so can be used against us as things that they want you to believe that might be so. But uh, go on to the global health. Again, not yours, not people's. They've already committed to killing you all off. Gates made the formula. It's right there, folks. You don't really need anything more. When you hear that, he's not the only one that believes that. You should be really concerned, and we should be kind of looking at how we're going to deal with that and why we have perpetual war for whatever reason. Well, whatever the excuse, they, they just need this war. They also need the division the war creates. Uh, average life expectancy to rise globally by 2030, but not for the U.S. Again, uh, you go through the reading, you read through what this is about. I just focused on that. I said, well, there you go. I want, just want to tell you, not for you folks in the United States. All your food security laws, all your health, uh, your health rules, and all your pharmaceutical constraints you think you have, your life's not going to get better. Your life expectancy is going to be less than anywhere else in the world. You ain't living to 90 like the rest of the world in austerity. Isn't that an inducement? Uh, so I just let you know that. Maybe that's why the DEA doesn't want you to use uh, marijuana, cannabis at a medicinal capacity, but they have to. Uh, they have to give a little constraint, a concession, and I'm saying you better go there. You better have your state press the point right to the wall. All use is medicinal. And forget the other discussion. See where that goes at least. But your life expectancy in the United States, not so good and not planned to be so good on purpose. This is supposed to be the most productive and, and, and best nation of people in the world and, the, and their plan and the World Health Organization is in on it. They're brokers to your demise. They are predicting you will not live longer. They don't need a good example in this world, if I can say that there's a good example to have. I'm not talking government now, folks. I'm talking about a spirit of uh, if we call freedom and liberty and the right to have property and produce for ourselves from that property and be the foundation that we can be to help all of us, everyone, uh, because of that production. Just, just that alone. We do it peacefully. We got laws to protect it all. Just start there again. Get back to the basics, maybe. Don't modernize. Modernize. This is where modernization is getting you, folks. That you and the U.S. are predicted to not have a life expectancy, or a good one, better than other parts of the world. Think about that. Think about that. And who? The w World Health Organization. Not about health. They invent stuff, folks. They are the scientists. They have the scientists behind that make the bird flu, the pigs fly flu. It's getting worse, they tell us. Oh, we got the first new one in 2017. They're inventing these. We got, I've done all those reports. Uh, they've been on the news. Where they tell us exactly what they are, the criminals, and we just let them go. Bill Gates, maybe. I don't even know the man. Uh, you know, he went. Uh, I was in the same valley he was. When all this blew up about electronics, well, have we gotten different paths? He's a worldwide killer, and I live behind a woodshed. Amazing. If geology, geography was any, any tell, that certainly didn't work. But I, don't, I guess I'm not a psychopath, I suppose. These people work together to set out their plan. They plan for those in the United States to have a less than nice life expectancy compared to everyone else they are beating down. Because the United States is really the only place that we have what we can do, notwithstanding all the corruption you see. We can bring it back. But that's the problem. We have to bring it back. Because these people that are involved and these scientists and these uh, lab rats, that, uh, they're the la making lab chemicals, and, and they tell you things that, that, that you think is correct. Oh, yeah, there's a few of us that listen behind the woodshed on these networks. Uh, oh, yeah, well, we know that's all a lie. That's fake news. Well, that's fine that that's coming out. What are you going to do about it? They put, oh, I can't do nothing about it. I got, I got things to do every day. Okay, well, I'm asking you to write a letter to the DEA and, and jump all over this cannabis. Why can't you do that? Can't do that. I got things to do. Okay, that's an excuse. That's not going to work. 
Now, in the labs, everyone, these people that are controlling the future for us are coming up with ideas that at one level I am completely astounded by. Just pretty cool what we can do. And then I found out in the world the cool things are used as an opportunity to get you to buy in so that they use that against us. Or that there's something that they're trying to do, it ends up being this monetary monetization of it or the control of it or the not just the control, but your like remember the epigenetic change in people they need to offer uh, them uh, more up as a re human resource, more conducive to the future they are planning, the future they want. All this is tied together. These scientists come up with what you would think is a cool sounding thing. I got a bunch of ranchers that are dying every year because a cow runs over uh, over the ran over the over the rancher or the farmer and gores them to death. We're losing five or six six farmers every year in the UK. I need to make a cow. I need, as a scientist, I need to genetically modify a cow so it doesn't have horns. Oh, okay. Well, it doesn't matter. There's two other breeds that already don't have horns. We're going to make one. Genetically modified cows without horns are created to make the countryside safer. Not you, the countryside. I find it to say the countryside because they're talking about rural. The urban-rural divide, that war that you don't understand mostly uh, that is against us, that is why we're being defeated as well. Uh, academia making these kinds of things. You know, oh, genetically modified cows, what can it hurt? Well, those genetically modified cows, it turns out, have to be quarantined. Wow. That's not very natural. Okay, quarantine cows. What could be going wrong? Well, they don't know. They'll tell you that it's all perfectly done. This is that CRISPR thing I was telling you about, that new technology. Cut and splice, te cut and splice technology. They can just remove your horns. They can just take and adjust little things here and there because you're just not quite right. You're just not safe enough. You're just not compliant in the way we need it. So we're going to cut and splice it. We're going to tell you, we're going to save some lives and some ranchers so you agree that this technology can be used to remove the cow's horns. So much bovine excrement here, folks. These are gene-edited cows that have the same problems that anything that man gene edits has. As I've told you, the real problem that they don't talk about and probably why they're quarantined, besides the genetic uh, uh, pollution that starts to go on with gene-modified uh, 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 organisms like plants that you see now, it's, the truth is coming out. They can't be stopped. Their genetics goes on, and then the company comes in and and, and sues you and wins against you stealing their stuff. And I can just hear Rome's now in the RLM chat, but uh, the, the, the corporations have just genetically, mo they have just uh, patented all your DNA. Yeah. Thank you, Rome. Comes back almost every time to say that. They're, they're, they're patenting your, your DNA to do what we don't know, but they're going to have it so they can manipulate it. They're going to remove your horns, folks. You don't think this is a, the, where this is going. This story was a benign story that was trying to get you. Is what I see, that's the, the soft sell. It's like the drug pusher. Well, I'll give you this much. You know, maybe I'll give it to you a second time. That third time, you're going to pay me. And then it goes. But these, uh, the, the manipulation of these genes have not been found to not cause a protective uh, response in the cell. Mother Nature protecting itself from intrusion even clinically so, uh, that causes spin-off proteins and enzymes to be made that are those continuing defenses against all cell, all cell, uh, cell replications or uses, and they attack whatever they come in contact with, as we've been finding that the gut bacteria, the gut organisms are the ones that are the first to start going. The cell walls of the stomach go and you start having lots of problems from the gut problems that this, they want to say, oh, we're just giving rid of the horns. In fact, they didn't even need to do that. They could do the techniques of natural, uh, natural breeding. Instead, they want to do this technique and sell it to you. Now we won't have cows with horns and that'll be okay. But they're quarantine cows for a time. They'll never, ever tell you of any studies about this real interaction. And I don't know if they can. I don't know if our science is really quite up to it even yet. 
that we find in another story here, reminding us again. They tell us all they know, these special experts, these scientists. And yet when you go back and look at their work, new story, same thing, repeated story, to remind us over and over and over and over. These people that are making the decisions really ought not be making the decisions. Most scientists can't replicate studies by their peers. This tells me the science we're getting is what? As I've told you before, not my statement, out of a, de out of a master's thesis study, this is conservation science. It's not actually science. It's agenda-based science, lobbying. We're going to do this. We're going to tell you we know what's going on. We're after something. What they're after is the funds that they can get to stay alive, to continue the promotions by government. Most of this money comes from the government to push themselves into places of the, what the government says they need uh, to do, what they are planning, those in government are planning against you. But now we have another report. If you needed to see it, I say this is more evidence. Here it is. Don't rely. All these agencies that work on best science can be shut down if you know how this works. DEA, same way. We talked about it last week. Same thing. The, the, the John Rappaport saying that cell lines, those, the way they resort to those, you can't tell whether or not uh, the cell lines are true enough to be a base to be practiced on. Most scientists can't replicate studies by, pe by their peers. That's meaning that no science is being done. Rep re reproducibility is science. And that only gives us the best guess that the multiple uh, that we, if we can multiply re reproduce it, that it must be that way. And yet we found that that's not necessarily the truth either. How far we are, how uh, how infantile we are in what we think we know as people, the people, the peoples that we are. Now we do some fascinating things, uh, but this is not for that. This is, in other words, this has been being put on us. Our lives have been hacked. We've been vulnerable to this. And uh, all you've been seeing about science, for the most part, is uh, lobbying science. It's to push these agendas forward. It's what allowed vaccines. It's what's allowed uh, uh, these uh, threats uh, to you, bioterrorism, with a guy that's supposed to be a philanthropist. Th that doesn't sound like a philanthropist to me. Coming up with a... What's he philanthropizing? If he's got a formula that says less people means less CO2, who is he going to give that money to when he kills everyone off? I don't get that part. It doesn't matter what my thoughts are. These are not philanthropists. They're just given a title. That's fake news, too, if we can go on there. It's a lie. It's a deception. These are people that are put in places that aren't doing what they're uh, what we're told they're doing. And when people start to scrutinize this, when you take the time it takes to research the data and, re and come up with a statement, you will be the one voice to s fix that wrong. Everyone has their interests. I don't see anywhere where there won't be a place for everybody to be a contribution in all of this. That we're, we're being f sent down these paths of where they want to go, uh, you know, and then that the, we are false idols, if you will, false uh, experts, false, uh, false uh, authority. Well, they're all authority. That uh, the little, kind of come backwards in this, a bunch of little things came up that I thought was kind of interesting. And I think it was uh, Gary L. that uh, on the Twitter sent out this, uh, this uh, story called Genetic Modified People what could go wrong it was a report it was a, a writing from again john rapaport genetically modified people what could go wrong well they were he's john's actually talking about a whole different aspect of this but when i saw that I'm, my mind went back to my report to you about the pig human hybrids it immediately flashed in my mind remember i'm always looking okay what's the underlying uh, goal well, if they are trying to uh, adjust us, and they are trying to uh, reduce our populations, and uh, they need to feed us, now everyone mind should go to Soylent Green is people too. That what flashed in my mind, and maybe you might think that would be weird, was 
the hybrid uh, pig human, introducing us to the hybrid pig human, and genetically modified people, for them to be getting genetically modified for better people. But I looked at it and said, well, how do we know that that's the better people? That could be the pig-human hybrid. And once we have pig-human hybrids for their organs, and we harvest those organs, not much different than after the fact instead of before the fact in Roe versus Wade, uh, legalization of the abortion industry for parts is parts, and flavor enhancement to Pepsi would be the afterbirth destruction of a diminished hybrid being chimera chimera what would they do once they get the organs what a waste all the rest of the meat and byproducts that they are going to want to make an industry to create to profit from they don't want just the organs. They make plenty of money. They want to be able to profit for the pig human. What's better than to put that into the feed system? And consistent with this thought was also, all of a sudden, the topical subject matter of cannibalism pops up. If you think this gets weird, folks, I'm beyond weird now. I'm beyond media. I'm beyond weird. I'm watching, I'm witnessing this thing unfold before my eyes. That week, cannibalism, the ultimate taboo, is surprisingly common. And this report from the National Geographic, another fake news people, for as beautiful as their photography is, one of those, one of those, the people that they hired were like, those are the kind of things I kind of em tried to emulate when I was doing photography. They really have some stunning things, but that's, see, that's the draw. That's the shiny stuff. They get you in. They say, it's a toady-toad, spider-eat-spider, and yes, eat human-eat-human human world. And you go through this story, and they sell you with how cannibalism is so normal. It came as a surprise to me that cannibalism was so widespread across nature. Initially, the party line was that the only times you see cannibalism, unless you're, we're dealing with black widow spiders or praying mantises, would be when it was uh, stress-related or due to a lack of alternative forms of food. But starting in the 1970s and 80s, researchers started to uncover many instances across the animal kingdom where it was completely natural behavior. And they go on to prove that cannibalism is normal Right before, right after the time when they're asking what could go wrong with genetically modified people, even if you're going to the best sense. See, they still have the triggered mechanisms and the cell responses to their own body attacking themselves as well. But then we come up with this idea that, well, no, these people might be pig-human hybrids. And we, we can't, like a, an abortion, we can't waste that material. We've got to make a profit from it. They're going to desensitize us to a to extent. It sounds maybe bizarre right now, but it's, it's here. It's like the cash of society came around in two years. It's here. But, but, but Bitcoin, the blockchain, it's here. The, the connections here were stark to me that I sent back to Gary all. I said, here, look at the broadcast where I talked about human resource profits, in particular the introducing the pig human and that cannibalism becomes topical. These creatures, these people that have pig cells will be harvested and we, they will be put in the feed chain. Remember, I can take the horns off a cow, it looks like a cow. What if I make people but I make them look like a pig? You won't care. You just see a pig on a, a pig in a picture. You don't care. It's actually, this is what I was talking about, we don't know the distinction in the line. We are now being given information that cannibalism is okay. I think you know where I'm going with it. I'll just come out. I was going to hold him back a bit. They are desensitizing us eating our own. 
if the little flavor enhancement to Pepsi didn't do it, this is going to be a little bit stronger for you. You all keep drinking Pepsi and other flavored enhanced things. Natural flavorings? Folks, did you miss that? This story about the cannibalism of nature and pointing to stress actually uses climate change as an excuse. If you think I'm a little far afield from Bill Gates and his reference to climate change and the disasters that are on us in the climate. We're right here, folks. This is a, uh, to me, it's an insanity, but here it is. I don't think I'm too insane to point it out. In fact, I think it's almost a duty that I'm able to see to do and tell you. This is a slow process, but as you've noticed through the years listening to me, those that continue, and thank you very much, but you've seen a ton of things come to fruition. It, it, this is not a magic trick. It's not a, really a special insight. It's just having an insight. It's just actually making those things important to look at. And yes, we do need a long-term memory on this. We can't live in the moment. We have to live in the moment, but not for our memories. That's why I tell you, they're, they're beating down the mining, the productive capacity of this nation because no one understands it. Even the people that are in it. See, those are just the people that do the work. They were supposed to be protected. The system has turned on itself. You're looking at the same defense mechanisms turned on its own capacity. Now, our nation is a fractal of this whole problem, telling you that this is an ongoing problem. We have to fix ourselves. We have to fix ourselves. Because if we don't, there are those planning to fix us. And remember, the cow that had the horns wasn't so good, so we're going to make it nice and shiny, shiny little uh, trick. We're going to take the horns away. They're safe now. No, there's no more farmers uh, dying, apparently. I guess they don't get stomped to death. They're crushed or leaned on or pinned between a wall and, and, and stomped down or whatever. No more. The horns were the only thing. That we allow these little incremental in, uh, invasions to our, to our uh, sensibilities. That, that we now have uh, knowledge that they'll remove your horns They'll remove, the, they'll fix something in you. We've heard, told all about this, not even new news. It's what I'm showing you what they think it looks like they're going to. And then they talk about cannibalism. And then they have another one. They talked about, and I didn't read it, they talked about the, the spread of, where can, they actually mention the problem with cannibalism is what we saw with spongiform, uh, mad cow disease in people translating through the meat. They say that's a byproduct of this problem as well that I say, okay, well, there's a glitch in the matrix. They have to fix that too. And then this, this report, this notice pops up. It's amazing to me how this all comes together. Japanese zoo kills 57 monkeys for having, quote, invasive alien genes. Okay, did I wake up the coast-to-coast the -coast crowd? Got alien genes. Woohoo! I've got you now. I draw this one out on you. I'm going to make you listen to me. I got alien genes in the monkeys. But in fact, what this is, this is a foreign genes to the monkey that they have in their zoo. They have snow monkeys they're trying to show, and yet there's the 57 were cross breeds with a rhesus macacus monkey, which they felt certainly wasn't pure breed and certainly not representative of the breed in the zoo. You, you're, this is talking to you folks. The zoo that you live in, the open air zoo, that invasive alien genes can be called. And they found it necessary. Well, as a fact, I mean, to me, I'm just sitting here with my, this, um, my mouth kind of drops a, a gape a bit. I kind of smirk a little bit. I'm looking, wow, they're telling us a whole lot right here. That when your genes, after they get done experimenting you, isn't good enough, they will rationalize a way to get rid of you. And I don't know all the movies. I'm sure Grimner could you know, tell us all the titles. If I was sitting in the same room, he'd whip out the title for me. There's probably been a movie about all these things. I know Soylent Green's one of them, right? The obvious one. It's the one I know. Uh, there's other, other movies that have all been written about all this. And what about those alien genes? What if they do become actually alien you think that's impossible? I'm going to come up to a story if I can get there. There's a, they're finding new alien species on this planet all over the place. Now that we're starting to see things. So, 
you're a genetically modified human. What could go wrong? Oh, wait a minute. You now have an alien gene we can't use. Well, we can justify culling you from the herd. And since cannibalism is so natural, into the soil and green pow uh, grinder with you. And everybody outside goes, num, num, I'm hungry. Is that too far fetched, folks? In the, am I talking a sci? Am I giving you a script for a sci-fi movie, folks? I'm reading the notice. I'm reading the news right off the presses. If you can, you know, off the web webosphere. This doesn't get any, truth is stranger than fiction. There was just some people that had the insight to kind of let us know a little bit. If you aren't, if you don't have the proper genes in the future. You will be uh, justified, and you will be that considered that hybrid. You think we're talking about pig humans right now? You wait till you, they don't like your gene sequence. Is it getting too weird for you? See, to me, that's reality. They're doing it, and that's why it's reality. Well, will I see it? I might. We might be seeing it now, but I mean, will it affect me directly? Probably not. And you know, you know, I'll be safe. if it does affect me, I'll say, see, I told you, as I'm being thrown into the soil and green grinder. So back to how is this coming? Is there's people in decisions, seats of decision making this? They're all tied to this A2030 UN Sustainable Development Agenda. Where do I, I didn't make all those up, folks. Those are the Bar Association. These are the rulers of your life. You're talking about no rulers? They're rulers. They have the power and they're the rulers. I don't see anybody attacking that. We did our best to lay the foundation. We sued the bar. They didn't answer. They can't answer to their, their crime. They're criminals. They can't answer. And yet they rule us. They rule over us. They have the power because we don't exercise our own. We have no clue about it on top of that. I see, so again, so many people that think they know that don't. Think they know what's going on. They do their part and more power to, listen, here's an example. Someone goes to a public comment, putting their comment in, Pouring out their research, telling the truth to these people sitting at the front desk on the public, public comment period. And you know what? More power to the fact that they did that. But you know, they missed the whole entire point. That was set up. Their participation fulfilled one of the things to deny what their good research showed and the good law they brought. They agreed that the process was lawful instead of a challenging it for it being a facade, a, a, a felony actually, against the very facts that one was presenting in the comment because they've been told, go make your public comment. I say make your comment, but your very first comment better be that the process was a felony. Now, I'm, that's just a, a one line. You need to go research that to find that, to proof, and, f proof that out and state that. It's, it's all short statements. It's, on, it's not on and on. This is really coming down to some really short stuff. That none of us do correctly. We go and we engage the system and we give credit to the people that are in the seats of decision that their decisions are based on this thing that's coming down on us that is allowing all this insanity, what looks like a s insanity to us, is the tools and the weapons that they're using against us. That's why it's insane. We can't believe that there's actually people that are that, that much, that psychopathic. And I think it's worse, but that's... I don't know another worse word than that. This concentrated evil, I suppose. That the people in decisions running this scam on us, and we allow it, get in the news, and they tell us on how this all works. They're talking about no corporatism and all this other thing. If I, if, you know, stop your nonsense. Stop uh, Occupy. Stop. Get out of the street. Start learning what you're really supposed to do if you are really somebody and not a paid-off shill as well. I told you get out of the streets, folks, and what happened right after that? But they started what? The, the, they went into the streets. See, that was not where you were. You were supposed to be away from that. I told you get into the system. Whether you can handle being an officer of the system I, I, is up to you. I mean, some people can do that, and they can do it really, really well. I work with a few that do that really well, and we are making changes through that. I couldn't do it. I don't have the temperament that way, I suppose. People can't tolerate, wouldn't tolerate me enough to vote for me. They'd rather fight with me. I don't know what that is, because I, I thought I'd coming out with the truth and the facts. I didn't realize this, pro, this internal programming, even those that, that would believe what I'm saying, the internal programming is such that you'll, re, you'll resist me as well. It's really a kind of a fascinating thing. 
that we find what we do, we get back in that system, and we start to make the decision that it's a long road, haul, long, long road, uh, road to hoe, long haul, a road to haul. Uh, it takes many, many, many years. It's how bad this thing is. That we can make the changes, and we aren't the people that are the bar, and we start to work how to how to take them out, and all the others running the agenda. And up in the news, and for our pleasure to see who it is that's doing it and how, uh, came a story. Oregon Governor Kate Brown and uh, uh, AG Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum blaze the Oregon Trail of political patronage. And, they, and this report shows us, these are two bar association members, showing us all the corporate support foreign to Oregon that comes in that benefits from the money that the, the taxpayers pay, so-called. Actually, the property owners are really being, are really being dinged for this. That, that this money is being paid, and they, they have, like, Oregon has, like, 1,200 attorneys in the Oregon government, but they have, like, another 1,200 that they pay outside the state. That all these legal, found, legal houses, these attorney houses, pay money to keep these two people in power. Now, we sued the state of Oregon, we sued the Attorney General, and we sued the House of the Governor. We sued the Bar Association. Uh, what can I tell you, folks? They, they defaulted out on that. I don't know what else to tell you. Here is all the people that are aiding and abetting treason against the people, and it continues. Is partly why I wanted to state this, and to tie it to these people, are the ones that impose what Bill Gates is promoting. And the fact that he tells you in the coming years, expect bioterrorism. Now, certainly he points it to is, is, or some you know, Al -K -L -C -I -A, duh, or whatever. doesn't matter who pulls that trigger. These are in the seats of decision, and the corporations and the, and the households of lawyers and other states are fueling this entire thing. And I hear crickets. I'm not even going to analyze what I see here. The money is... is, is I mean, obscene what's invested. Now, on the other hand, I guess some of you that are defeatists can say, well, how can we win? There's so much money. Well, I don't know. We do quite a bit on no money. I do, I do quite a bit on the little generosity and donation and charity that's provided to me. It's just enough to allow me to focus, put my blinders on. For as much as I'd rather do something else, I put my blinders on and I do what I think I can. I know it's possible. So I know that those of you that can do things, that have learned a, a thing in the world to do, to create, let's say, what the, the, the grease of the world is, which is this monetary stuff, I don't do that. It's a struggle the whole time, but I, I still won't do that. I've committed to, to focus myself, and I've been blessed to have people that will support that and allow me to continue. That Those of you that can do that for somebody need to find those people out. You need to do your part. Like I was, I've been asking, we do this once a year. I'm going to ask one more time because I think we fell a little bit short on the hardware side. Uh, RLM, uh, we need a little bit more hardware, I think, I heard. And I don't talk with Grimner. I just see what's going through the chat. I don't really, I come in, I leave, I, I do my thing, I jump in, I talk for a while. Uh, pre, right after I do the setup on the broadcast on Saturdays, I'm talking in the chat for a few hours, and then I, and I have to go to get prepared you know, for, for today. It's usually the only time I go in, so I don't talk with Grimner too much. But I think I overheard that we could use some more donations for hardware to RLM. So reallibertymedia.com, go to the front page as a place to donate, if you will. Those of you that can. Those of you that have the, that touch of the Midas touch, if you will, that can turn stuff around. Maybe reconsider if you bailed out of that. Maybe figure out a way you can use it and devote that time spent to hand the cash you can make that I don't understand how to do. Uh, to somebody that can advance for you what what you think needs to be advanced. Even if it doesn't come to RLM, do that part. I certainly don't hope that you fall prey to the deceivers and, and, and give money there, but that's the that's the way that that cookie will crumble. And I will prevail, in, uh, well, until I'm taken, I will prevail. I will prevail even if it never looks like I've won. I've won, folks. And I guess that's the way I, I just play, place it that way. It's just the next thing to do, and it's the next spoke to be a stick to be in the spoke it's the next uh, next uh, chasm to dig uh, for people to fall into that are no good
it's the stinking abyss I'm trying to cover over uh, or, or keep people from or whatever the, the metaphor is you want to use. We have in this, there's a report right now that shows the governor of Oregon and the attorney general are being paid by outside sources to defeat you. And they are the, the, the rulers of your life. They're the Bar Association. We have a foundational case about this. They wouldn't even come to answer it. Default judgment, Article 3 court. This is no small thing. And yet we allow this to continue. Now, what we're doing behind that in, in enforcement, just to let you know without telling you much, we can't, again, I don't like to talk before, we are still enforcing that, and we are now move, taking the next step, we hope, to foster enforcement of this part and so this this story came very important because these are the people that are pushing that agenda that Bill Gates is pushing that these uh, that bring up these ideas that we've got too many people in the world so we're gonna have to eat some of them we're gonna have to justify cannibalism and we can then find some defect in you and that become you become part of you do your in fact you throw yourself into the soylent green grinder because you're doing your part. You've been told you're just a waste case. You can do something good for society. Now, I've always said these people are pushing Agenda 21, and this, they should throw themselves into their meat grinder, and I'll just stick you on the field because I think the plants can do, work that little bit better. But I have to let your field sit for seven years while all the toxins come out of you. Let Mother Nature take care of you. But no, they want you to get in the grinder first, and they're setting it up for you, and they're setting up a very, very cruel, talk, talk about eugenics, very cruel system. And people will be clueless. They will actually applaud the guy who throws himself into the grinder. It may be the new uh, Game of Thrones. It might be the new breads and circuses in the Colosseum. It might be you walking out to the Berryessa, uh, the, the, the Berryessa overspill that's now got, finally spilling for ten year, uh, after 10 years of dry drought in California. The place is flooding. It looks like an o inner ocean, inner, inner ocean uh, inner, inland ocean over there. Uh, you'll jump. You'll, you'll, you'll have a big procession now. You'll have a big, uh, nice big ceremony. You'll walk down the plank and you'll jump into the Berryessa overflow, which looks like a big hole into, into the depths of hell. And down at the bottom, they'll have a grinder, and you will be given all the glory for doing that. And you'll feed the fishes, if nothing else. This is where they're, and it'll be justified. You will be condemned because it's justifiable. And it's not, but that's what everyone will believe. And your mind will be adjusted by all the epigenetic chemical transmutations that are going in you right now over time and then the legalization of things that are nonsense and the impositions of things that are nonsense to get you to agree that someone who is inferior and why they keep the division of so-called race going it'll go beyond color for sure they got to get rid of that it'll be as someone declares your genetic material is not sufficient it's alien to not not between species, but to what we want. You're seeing it in the Japanese culling of these m monkeys. Should I say, I'm telling you? <laughs> Does that drive it home a little better? I'm telling you, folks. Do I sound like the madman on network? No, sometimes I actually have to pull back. I start to feel like I'm going there. I'm getting rabid about it, folks. Oh, he, yeah, he's got to go to the grinder now. He had a little bit too much off his meds. He's got to go. His DNA wasn't adjusted quite right. He went over the edge. He's got to go. And you'll all go, yay! Strange ancient microbes push limits of what life can survive on Earth and off. Very interesting study, but this goes back to quite a few uh, subject matters I talk about. These are alien cell structures that are in the earth that science is now recognizing and finding. NASA wants to take credit for this. I've talked to you about it before. How miners know about that and what we get blamed for because of what we, what we expose. Uh, that's already there, but you weren't focused on it because no one was there to focus you on it, but the miner to make his mine shop. Uh, that they're finding these, um, and this is known as the, 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 the deep sea ch ocean, the, 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 the chimneys the, that they have, the smokers in the ocean, where they have life 
that builds up around these deep, deep ocean uh, volcanic uh, smokers that are billowing out heavily mineralized uh, water uh, solutions. That, that creatures that don't need light or oxygen can live off the energy of the minerals in the stream uh, and the temperature of those that they survive is much hotter. That NASA has found and revived a bunch of very old mi microbial creatures from a slumber of tens of thousands of years and what they've discovered about how tenacious and strange life can be could mean space explorers need to take a much closer look at what they may be carrying with them and what they may bring back. It was an interesting diversion. These cells, and they start understanding what these creatures do to be more resistant in their life, seem to me in the context of the hybrid humans to be putting in genetic CRISPR technology or better. They're going to have to get a little better than even as good as they think that is. Then you will be made to be able to go into harsher and harsher environments, uh, things like maybe the radiation uh, uh, expendable too. They, they can't get the robot to get into Fukushima. They could sure use some guy uh, that's really tough, that's resistant to radiation to go in there, couldn't they? Well, we're just gonna, it'll take us, uh, it'll take us a couple years, but we'll, we'll make that creature for you. Uh, he's a, he's a, some human, um, bacteria uh, hybrid and, and, and it doesn't matter if he dies he's just gonna be made that's all he's gonna know to do he'll go in and do what we need to do he'll die or he'll survive he'll glow in the dark we'll put him on a pedestal we'll give him a medal uh, but anyway the science behind this is very fascinating it says that there's microbes sealed in, in crystals in rocks and minerals that exist that do not need uh, they're not carbon based and this is the creatures I was telling you the miner finds in the rock. They're already there. They're all over the place. That makes the acid water. It's already there. The miners don't make acid water. They go in the mine after the mineral, and the critters are already there munching on the material that they need. That, that is where the, the gold and the, the silver and the, and the, the elemental stuff sat saturates because of, it's a, a water deposition. It's a whole fascinating study there that the acid that these creatures exude dissolve the rock and they go after the element that they want that gets to break it down and in some cases the special these the valuable element we think is like what we use is gold and silver mostly gold it's inert they actually use to build their skeleton with fascinating fascinating life how, how would you like to have an exoskeleton that's made out of uh, gold well not maybe so so tough but it's really inert and it's electrically viable, so now you can use the uh, energy fields from, from your environment as well. Remember, gold is impervious except to what? To aqua regia. You have to have a couple of combinations of acid in a certain way before you'll dissolve your shell. Yeah, what if they make that a, a human hybrid for doing that? I don't know where this goes, folks. But interesting nonetheless, but together with all these other stories, uh, NASA claiming to find these critters that miners have been having to work around all this time and being blamed for the uh, for the excretions of these uh, these critters uh, is pretty fascinating. One, you're, they, we'll all embrace NASA and we'll forget that this means that we're, we have the potential to bring back critters or actually give critters uh, to some place. That there is life apparently in uh, lots of places or potentially so. Not ours, not us. But, but life none, the life processes and processes, uh, processes uh, foreign to us, existing. Organisms that don't need to have what we claim need to be had. Uh, that, that's a fascination. But when you start getting into these genetic, uh, when you have people that are willing to alter somebody else or some other creature, or like John Rapport, what could go wrong? Human, human DNA ad adjustments. Uh, folks, we're looking at, they're handing you the answers. Uh, to what they want you to understand when they when it's time they will get you to have agreed that whatever they were doing is perfectly okay and one of the things that kind of came up with it's not in human now not human hybrid but it was in this uh, idea that we can do things uh, without regard and uh, to uh, ramifications we don't really look down the path we're willing to put, a scientist will push the cherry red button because we think it's a cool idea. We just want to see what's going on. Or worse, we actually have an agenda that we believe is the way it is. And so we're going to affect the outer world 
dis- despite what might be the ramifications, was this little story of a so-called scientist, and I'm going to put him in the conservation science. He's going to conserve something. What it occurred to me was, is he was uh, doesn't prove out the theory that they work on about man and development killing off animals. Uh, but it also shows that, that maybe he's being disrespectful to other people without knowing it. And he's not actually doing science. Man repopulated entire city with butterflies from his own backyard. But he's not just any man. He's an aquatic biologist by, by profession. I'm going to call him a conservation biologist because he's a, actually not a biologist more than a lobbyist. And he doesn't care, actually, to do science more than to find ways to promote his belief system. And I'm, I'm putting, I don't know the guy, I'm putting a lot on my conception through this story, uh, this report, but I think it would hold a bit of water, and so I'm going to run with it. But uh, he uh, found that as, uh, where was this? I don't remember now where his city was, maybe San Francisco or someplace. Darn it. Again, all this story, things to keep up with. He's out of California. He found out that there was a butterfly that was in San Francisco, was vanishing. In fact, he's back backyard conservationism. And he, he put it on as his hobby now to make it his hobby to save the population that vanished from San Francisco. The, 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 they blamed this disappearance from the expansion and development of the San Francisco area. But he goes on and says that he goes outside of his bio- biology to become a hobbyist in, in growing butterflies. And I'm going to tell you, I've done this. In fact, my sister loved to do this with monarch butterflies. Uh, but we did it a little different. Whenever there was something growing in the, in the garden that had butterflies, we would foster and encourage them. Uh, she tended to focus on the plants, the milkweed, that the caterpillars uh, that, the, that made the, 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 the monarch butterfly work. So it wasn't that we worked really hard. We just kind of allowed them to, we protected that part in our gardens. For those that we could see we liked, I suppose. That was another choice, didn't it? So I'm not f- unfamiliar about how to do all this. My problem is, he makes a theory that they disappeared by because of man's development. And then he turns t- to a project which he uh, intensely brings back this butterfly. And then he finds that they actually exist. So my first observation was, well, that proves that development wasn't what caused them to vanish. Because even with the development, after they were re- brought in. This is this like bringing salmon back to an area. You force them into an area they don't exist and you hope that the condition works to make them survive. And uh, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And then they blame man and development. In fact, this case, though his encouragement of the butterfly, which is a beautiful butterfly. I have no problem with the generic uh, application of this. The, the, that he found that they've got, they would actually infest a whole city reinfest to me proved development didn't kill them actually there may have been a other a different predator a, a lack of predator or predator that developed there may be a different environment that developed that pushed them out that when he reintroduced them they they lived they lived they actually lived in great numbers then my thought turned to that guy's not real in his agenda pushing he didn't care about the people around him. Because I don't know if you've ever raised caterpillars or raised for moths or, or raised for, for butterflies. They're beautiful, but they, they have these caterpillars, especially the big butterflies, that uh, they are voracious destroyers of vegetation. We got them out here with the pine tree. They chew the pine, new pine tree, pine needles. They just chew them down. They'll chew down your tomato plants. They'll chew down anything. That this guy didn't have any respect for his, his, his neighbors when he's fostering and encouraging these grand numbers of, uh, of butterflies meant there was lots more caterpillars eating gardens. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be too happy uh, to have to deal with that as a gardener. Whatever, I don't know what this, this little, little critter needs to eat. Maybe it's just a weed. Maybe that's just telling there's so many weeds now that are not maintained in the city. Maybe that's a good thing. We haven't studied it. The point is, typically, these, critters, these, these little caterpillars come after your gardens. 
Now, the extended thought is, well, if I'm a gardener and I'm down the street, now the whole city's got these things. I go down to, because I'm just a normal urbanite, I run down because I'm told to run down to Lowe's or, or Home Depot, and I get Roundup or I get whatever else thing, I, some pesticide, I think, some fungicide, because I'm trying to figure out what my plant's disappearing to, why all these spots are developing. See, the caterpillars bring disease too. And so I'm now going to the store and I'm putting more and more pesticide and chemicals on my land. And I'm really not that cool at it because I'm a homeowner. I'm a dumb homeowner. I haven't figured it out. Wasn't the kind of thing that I think the, aqu uh, the aquatic biologist had thought too clearly about because all those chemicals go down into the aquatic environment. He says he's studying. And then he comes with a report and says, oh, we're losing all the aquatic life. It must be man. Okay, we got made the loop of, of insanity. The guy who wants to see more butterflies actually and is studying is the profession is the aquatic is actually helping to perpetuate his ability to witness the destruction of the aquatic life that he caused is the short sightedness that I, I see going on almost everywhere, even amongst us, you know. I don't even know what to call us. All these people, we all see like pol the politics, the government gone bad, whatever. The little fantasies we put up in our minds about how to counter it. This is what's going on. We are so led by the nose, by our own ignorance. As I keep pulling that ring out of your nose by someone you think is out there doing it. You, you don't understand because you don't understand you. You put the ring in your own nose and you have your hand tugging on it. It's, per it's pretty fascinating to me to watch. And so... What do we do? What, do we keep, oh, we like the pretty butterflies? Yeah, I like the pretty butterflies. But do we go on to look a little bit deeper? Do we start to look the people that we put faith in? Faith is a religion. Their belief system is faulty, and we keep promoting it, and we say nothing against it is part of our problem. And then when we do, I'll go move on. I finally get back to the long time. I got so many tabs I don't get to. Get into one from last week or months and weeks ago, weeks ago. Then when you stand up officially and do so, you might be a set against. Is the way this agenda also works. Journalists who obtain leaked official material could be sent to prison under new proposals. Is again, talk about fake news. If you start even telling the truth, uh, no different than they, the seat of decision will have the decision on how your life will continue or not. That like indefinite detention, we can put you indefinitely in tank because we say so. Someone will come up and are doing it because you're not doing other rules to stop it. They will come up and make you a criminal for actually coming out with uh, information they don't want exposed, exp uh, exposed for other people. Uh, the, it was a major overhaul set of the Official Secrets Act, an update to the Espionage Act in the UK. Again, global things are happening. This is not, not yet at least officially here in the United States or elsewhere, it is now being broached, no different than these other things I talked about today. You won't even be able to call out soon uh, these things. They will be deemed to be fake news like you see Trump doing it. He'll snub you, which may or may not be correct. He'll snub you like anybody. Next guy's going to do the same thing. You'll be shut down. You will be considered to be doing uh, an espionage, an attack on their agenda. Think about how that works, folks. This is, like, I guess, another movie that I think uh, comes to mind. I don't know the names. They've got us where they want us, and we're not responding, at least what I tried to offer uh, to the uh, cannabis. Ha go to your state. Have the state determine that the pre at least the prima facie, there might be a better standard, but at least the prima facie standard uh, of use is medical so that there is no other use that can be seen prima facie in the state, and it puts you away from that recreational so-called. That's the kind of thoughts you have to move. It's not just your direct point. It's how it reflects. What's the next step in the process? Look at the, uh, the ramifications of what you do down the road and, what, and then look very carefully at whether or not that can help you or not. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said is helpful to you to, to actually get engaged. The action is what's going to take, rightful action more importantly. Uh, thank you, Grimner, for all you do in uh, reallibertymedia.com. In the broadcast, the ability to put the broadcaster in the archive. We've made hardware for that and things, folks. Donations on the front page of reallibertymedia.com. Social network for everyone to get back together and try to work some of this stuff out, I will hope. Freedomsnetwork.com. Uh, uh, 
And uh, Jules, thank you very much for what you do, uh, bringing the broadcast, podcast, podcast, and then the uh, replay on Thursday of this broadcast, uh, right after Rock the Boat with Ron Steffens. Thank you very much, Ron, for your acknowledgement. I do appreciate it, what you do. And uh, the uh, terrestrial broadcasters, I do appreciate it. Folks, tell people uh, to post us on their website, simulcast, or send it around on Facebook or whatever, whatever you got, Twitter, whatever. Tell us, tell people, I'm here, we're here. Thank you very much. I'll be here next week. Tech diffs and nature willing.